Oh, hi, sir. Oh, hello there. Very <laughs> nice to meet you. Finally getting to meet you. I, 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 indeed, and I'm uh, very... Uh, Sorry about all the questions. I, oh, no, um, it's totally perfectly making sense. It's definitely understandable. No worries. So Gavin Williamson is being interviewed for a possible job by Soo Yeon Lee, the Vice President of External Affairs at the South Korean firm Hansong Consulting. Ahead of the Zoom chat, Sir Gavin sent Soo Yeon a series of emails asking for more information about the company and wanted some references. I'm very intrigued as to... Um, some of the things that you were sort of saying that you were um, uh, looking at sort of doing and sort of uh, looking at sort of exploring as, uh, as an idea. So Gavin was right to be suspicious about Hanson Consulting because, well, because it doesn't actually exist. It's an entirely fictional company. It has a website and an email address, but no clients, no money and no staff. And Su Yon Lee is an undercover reporter. I'm Anthony Barnett, and for many years I've been investigating the financial interests of politicians of all main parties. I was approached by Led by Donkeys to help them conduct an experiment after the recent scandal over MPs and their second jobs. In the middle of a cost of living crisis, when people need their MPs more than ever, would a serving member of parliament still consider taking a job furthering the interests of a foreign company on top of their constituency duties? and how much would they want to be paid. It's not against parliamentary rules for an MP to take a second job, or a third, or a fourth job, nor is it against the rules for them to work for a foreign company, and there are no limits on what they can earn and how much time they can spend. And maybe that's the problem. Certainly, a clear majority of the public think it's wrong for serving MPs to also work for a private company. I, I, I think there are. I think sort of right across, um, uh, you know, the UK and Europe, uh, there's an awful lot of investment uh, opportunities. I, I wasn't sure what sort of, um, uh, was it sort of uh, the, the sort of uh, the family, was it, is it heavy industry that they're involved in or is it sort of uh, technology industries? Twelve hours before our scheduled meeting, Sir Gavin Williamson emailed us, saying that before we take things any further, I would be grateful if you could send some more information on your business and some suitable references. And two hours before we were due to speak, Sir Gavin emailed us again, saying he needed to take security very seriously and asking for information on the existence of the company, before adding, I do hope that you understand, as I would very much like to discuss what sounds a fascinating opportunity. Of course, we couldn't prove Hansung exists, but minutes before the call, he said he'd come on to Zoom anyway. But um, but it certainly sounds really interesting. I mean, you, obviously, as you uh, know, and obviously in South Korea, there's sort of uh, very um, uh, clear rules for, for those who are, um, you know, sort of, um, um, you know, doing advisory, uh, any uh, form of advisory work. Um, and... Um, that, that's incredibly uh, important, sort of probity. Um, I suppose, really, what I sort of, uh, I, I, I sort of have been very fortunate to have an experience of not only uh, working in industry before uh, going into politics, um, but I obviously had the, uh, an enormous privilege of uh, working um, uh, in the, the roles in defence, uh, education. Um, as, as well as sort of party management, it's a uh, in a role that you don't really have. I, um, I I don't believe in South Korea, which is a role of chief whip, um, um, and um, and that's all about sort of um, the uh, the party management of uh, uh, a political party. Sir Gavin was also in Rishi Sunak's cabinet as Minister of State without portfolio until he was forced to resign after allegations of bullying. But he's pledged to clear his name and he was happy to talk to us about his role heading up the Ministry of Defence. When I was Defence Secretary, uh, I was very keen to sort of see British forces more heavily um, involved um, uh, in the sort of Asia-Pacific region. And we started to see um, sort of the development of work between uh, Britain and Australia, which uh, led to uh, Australia signing um, you know, the £20 billion frigate deal with BA, BAE Systems, which is one of the UK's largest uh, defence contractors. Um, 
we also sort of saw the tentative development of some of the, the discussions between uh, the UK and Japan in terms of uh, as looking at the um, future combat uh, air strategy, uh, which has led to the sort of, a, um, you know, that, that's been taken on by my successors and uh, that's been developed into um, a new fighter jet uh, project, which is, you know, very much world leading. So, Sir Gavin is asked about his availability to attend six board meetings, including one in South Korea. Um, would you be able to make the time for it as being member of the parliament? Um, yeah, obviously you, you have to balance off your parliamentary and constituency duties because you uh, th those are obviously incredibly important. But I, I, I'm sure um, um, I would be able to travel to South Korea, yes. So... Apart from that, we might we will be also reaching out for one-off meetings depending on the urgent situations that need your attention, depending on the sectors that we need advice on. So would that also be possible as well? Uh, yes, it would. I see. So I would say, can I put you down that in if we give you a heads up, you'll be available in general? Uh, yes, you could do that. Yes. I, I mean... As I say, we'd always have to manage sort of uh, uh, diaries and obviously commitments, but uh, uh, certainly uh, would be available, yes. Okay. We asked Sir Gavin about his fee. Uh, may I ask whether you have a daily rate? Uh, I, 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 I would, you know, as I say, I, I'd much rather have a bit of an understanding as to you know, what your business and organisation sort of does and making sure that is... Um, you know, uh, works, um, uh, but I, 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 I sort of uh, don't have. Um, I, I, I don't have that. But so Gavin won't be drawn on a fee, insisting he first needs to know more about Hanson Consulting. Okay. Sure. I, I'm sure. Um, you know, it's uh, um, you. You'll have. You know, been doing your research and everything else like that. But I think from my perspective and also uh, your perspective, it's, it's making sure that it's the right fit. Yes, um, yes, it's just that, it's just my concern that I have. Mm -hmm. We then tell Sir Gavin that we're coming to London in the spring. So once we sort out the schedule and all that, would you be able to set up a couple meetings? Um, I, 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 what sort of meetings? Um... I mean, reflecting on your experience, we were hoping to have a meeting with some government officials related to the sector or maybe policy regulations. Would that also be feasible? I, 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 I don't think that would be... Um, I, I'm not sure if that would just be proper or right, actually. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I do apologise. Um, I think I'm probably going to have to... I, I feel um, I'm not sure... This is uh, maybe I'm the right person uh, okay. on this because, uh, but, uh, but thank you for your, very much for your time. Uh, okay. I'm just sort of, uh, okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. And with that, Sir Gavin was gone. While he initially appeared keen to take up a second job, in the end, our fake company was not for him. When the issue of meeting ministers came up, he hung up. We sent a follow-up email to his personal account, but he never replied. Since our call with Sir Gavin, he has once again taken a second job working as an advisor to an education company where he earns £50,000 a year. We asked Sir Gavin to provide a statement, but he did not. A lawyer working on his behalf said there is no complete prohibition on MPs undertaking outside work, and Sir Gavin did nothing wrong by simply attending an initial exploratory meeting. After hearing more details about the potential role on the International Advisory Board, he made his position abundantly clear and refused to explore the offer further. The lawyer said Sir Gavin did not breach parliamentary rules.